Welcome to video number eight in module 309, Class 4 Driver Training. This is the last video in this course. And for many of you, it's also a momentous occasion because it's the last video or lesson in your entire program. So take a moment to celebrate that. This is uh, content from the Signs, Signals, and Markings chapter, which is chapter 11 in the manual. And I have to strongly recommend once again that you actually go to the book and review that chapter, get friends to quiz you or make flashcards or games with these. People often overestimate their ability to recognize or correctly label each of these types of signals and markings. And it's a common area where people get tripped up. There's no way I can cover it all in this video. So do go and look at the chapter. So there are three ways to read signs, shape, color, and the messages on them, both with words as well as with symbols. And the really cool thing is that most of those things are standardized throughout the world. I've driven in places like Italy and Scotland and Mexico, and the symbols are very similar anywhere I've gone. Um, regulatory signs are the ones we're probably most concerned about that describe laws and regulations. But there are also signs that give us other kinds of helpful information, such as school, playground, and crosswalk signs, and signs that tell us how we can use various lanes. On each slide, I've got a couple or three different uh, uh, pictures, and I'd like to get you to pause and think if you can guess what each of those is about. So take a look at the three here and see if you recognize what they all are about. All right, well, let's see how well you did after pausing. This first one you should recognize denotes an HOV lane, and it says it right here, but you'll notice also when you see later on that this type of lane is demarked by a particular type of road marking. The black diamond means it's a specialized lane, but these other pictures are really important because this picture shows that buses are allowed, and this picture here shows that the vehicle is allowed to carry, a vehicle carrying three or more passengers can go here. And not all diamond lanes are HOV lanes. Some of them are for buses. Some of them allow two or more passengers. And usually motorcycles are allowed in them as well. This is a do not enter sign. And um, that should be a fairly easy thing for you to recognize. But red with a bar through it has an overall meaning. And this particular symbol just simply means do not enter. But anytime you see red with a bar through it, you know it's telling you not to do something and uh, it means the opposite of whatever that picture would look like without the red bar. This means that the road is going to narrow and there's usually a narrow bridge. Did you get it? You'll also see some markings that tell you how much, where you can control, where you can, I should say, turn and where you cannot. You'll have some that describe how you can park, lanes that are reserved for various uses, warning signs, object markers, construction signs, and so forth. Now, I want to spend just a moment on a couple of these. Reserved lanes, I didn't put an image here, but many people misunderstand what is meant by the signs that demark uh, disaster routes. They think that those signs indicate where we should go if we're evacuating during a disaster. They actually mean the exact opposite. They mean that in the case of a disaster, those routes will be closed to anybody other than designated emergency and essential vehicles. So for example, let's say there was a flood or an earthquake in our area and we had to evacuate. Lougheed Highway is a designated disaster route and you would not be able to use it. You'd have to go down roads like Dudney Trunk or Keystone to get out of town. Some other important ones. These orange signs are usually temporary and they tell you that construction or flag people are ahead. And now here in BC, there are usually laws that increase the amount of fines or penalties if you violate a traffic law inside between these signs. So when you see a construction sign, it's not only warning you of a specific hazard ahead, but it's essentially doubling all of the other penalties associated with infractions on that stretch of road. You might have seen a marker like this on a bridge abutment and many people don't understand that the bars on it are telling you something. When the bars point in this direction, it's telling you to drive on the right side of the sign. And if the bars were pointing the other direction, it would be, be, be telling you to drive on the left. Sometimes you'll see that there's a dividing line and they go in both ways and it's telling you that there's an obstruction in the middle of the road, but you can drive on either side. 
The way I like to remember it is this. Think of the lines like somebody pointing at the road where you can drive. If you imagine that this is somebody's finger, then you can tell that it's saying to keep right. And that's the simple way to remember it if you get it on your test. Some signs are universal. No matter where you go in the world, a red octagon means one thing and one thing only. Stop, even if you don't recognize the printing on the sign. And an upside down triangle, usually in yellow, means yield. It's important to understand what yield means. Yield means give somebody else the right of way or let them go first. And when you're yielding, it's important to understand that that doesn't always mean to stop. In fact, when you're entering a highway, you're supposed to yield while merging, meaning you're supposed to slow down or speed up to match the speed of traffic. And most people don't understand that when entering a highway, it's almost always about speeding up because you're usually going from a slower road to a faster road. But you let the cars that are coming down that, that highway go ahead of you and you follow in behind them. That's what yielding means. A pentagon sign is a school zone sign. And the color itself might be a little bit different. It might be a yellow or more of a greenish tone. It's the shape that really matters. The default speed through a school zone is 30 kilometers an hour, but you may see a tab below it that tells you or reminds you of that. If a school zone is along a highway, such as you'll see at the uh, Christian school just as you're entering Abbotsford on Highway 11, then that speed limit can sometimes be 50 kilometers an hour and it'll say that below. But that only happens on highways. If there's no tab, you must go 30 kilometers an hour. Many people get confused between these two signs. The sign on the left is for a playground zone. It can be anywhere near a park or playground, and it's more limiting than the sign on the right. The sign on the left is an application from dawn till dusk every single day. Dawn happens 30 minutes before the sun rises, before you can see the sun, and dusk happens 30 minutes after the sun sets. So of course, it's different depending on the time of the year. And by the way, it's still dawn or dusk even if it's a rainy day and the sun isn't shining. So 30 minutes before the designated time of sunset or sunrise. In a nutshell, if there's daylight, go this speed limit between the signs. You must slow down to 30 kilometers an hour at the first sign and stay at that speed until you get to the sign that faces the opposite direction. And with a school zone, the rules apply only during school hours, usually 8 until 5, and only on school days. So during Christmas break or summer holidays, the rules don't apply, similarly on weekends. The green sign that we have here is an example of an informational sign. And of course, they can tell us the distances to places, but they might also tell us what exits are coming up, or let us know about certain amenities, like for example, whether a brake check is forward. There are lots of other kinds of signs. For example, orange diamonds tell us about construction. And we talked about green circles and red strike through circles, which tell us what we can and cannot do. Here's another example of a sign. Blue signs stipulate services that motorists might be interested in, like gas stations or restaurants or hotels. Green signs and black signs like this can confuse people. They often get them completely the opposite. This sign tells us what we're allowed to do, that from a particular lane, we're allowed to turn left or allowed to turn right, but we're not allowed to go forward. The black sign with white imaging shows what we must do. And sometimes they could have chosen either type of sign in particular intersections. And by the way, you can often see painting on roads that looks the same as this, and these signs are exactly the same as a marking on a lane that tells you you must go left or you must go right. So white rectangles include driving regulations. I don't have a picture of them here, but that includes the speed limit. Black squares, as I said, stipulate the lane use and green rectangles, as I showed on the last slide, show you any kind of information that might be available to you. I also don't have an image here of a railway crossing but it's very important for you to study up and understand the rules of railway crossings and the crossing arms as well. Now, there are lots and lots of different types of signals that you'll come across, and some of them are confusing. When you come to a railway crossing like this, it's telling you to be prepared to stop. 
if you do not have a crossing arm, but you're driving a class four vehicle, remember you have to stop, even if you wouldn't have to in your own car. So you have to stop, remember the distance talked about in an earlier video, and check and make sure you have 10 clear sections to safely cross. If you see a flashing light or a crossing arm that is dropping, of course you must stop and you must stay stopped until the light stops flashing, even if you think that it's safe to go. The other signs here are all for different kinds of lane control. This one down here where the signs are laid on their flat tells you what lanes are safe to drive in. For example, on the, the Lionsgate Bridge or the Massey Tunnel, they use this type of signal to switch in the middle lane from one direction to the other to help offset traffic. When the light is red, it tells you you cannot use that lane. When the light is green, it tells you that you can and usually there's a period in between when they're switching the purpose of the lane where it flashes yellow or has an X in the middle. And they'll usually send a truck out that clears that lane to make sure it's clear. But if it's flashing, get out of the lane and go into a lane that has a green light. Traffic lights, most of us are very familiar with, but the flashing of a traffic signal can really cause people to be confused. So I'd like to take a moment to deal with that. A flashing green light means that the light can be turned to red by a pedestrian. They can push a button that will make the button, uh, make the light go red. And so you should watch for pedestrians in the area around these signals because that's a hint that somebody might push the button. Flashing yellows work like caution signs. But what many people don't understand about flashing yellows is that Sometimes a light that normally works with a regular operation, the red, green, and blue, sorry, sorry, red, green, and yellow approach becomes a flashing light in quieter hours. In fact, I've even been in an accident that was caused by this. The light normally operated as a regular traffic circle signal, but in the evenings, two directions would have flashing reds and two directions would have flashing yellows. I didn't know that and I thought, all four people from every direction had a flashing red. That's the signal down here. A flashing red works exactly the same way as a four-way stop. And we'll talk about four-way stops in a moment. A flashing yellow means you can go through the light without stopping, but you must be cautious. So if you come into a flashing red, be careful that it's flashing red on all four sides. And don't just proceed when you see that the other person is slowing down they may not intend to come to a full stop. Now, what happens if the light is flashing red? Well, again, this happens under two common circumstances. It happens when there is a signal that is less busy for certain parts of the day, and it also happens when there's a power outage, and the battery power that runs that signal will normally just go to a default of flashing red. If you don't know how to navigate through a four-way stop, you can be in a high risk situation. So the rule of thumb for a four way stop, whether it's created by a flashing red or by four, um, uh, red, four stop signs, is that the vehicle that arrives first has the right of way. And if more than one vehicle arrives at the same time or approximate time, then the vehicle that is furthest to the right has the right of way. When a signal goes out of operation and it's busy out, this can be very confusing because you can't quite tell who got there first, nor can you tell who is the person most to the right because there's somebody at every single one of the light uh, parts of the intersection. And so there's no substitute for making good eye contact with other drivers and proceeding carefully. Make sure that you don't assume people are going through the intersection in the opposite direction and that you can go ahead. If somebody forgets to signal and they hit you, you are going to be equally at fault. So only go through by yourself. One last signal to show you here, and that's this white signal. Not something you see very often, but what it means is that the buses get to go before the rest of the cars. So when a light is red with white, it means that everybody else has to still wait, but the bus is allowed to proceed through the intersection and this often happens where a signal is at the beginning of an HOV lane. All right, and we're gonna talk about signals and markings on the road to wrap up. So 
One of the things that can confuse people is that if you see a painted marker like this on a road, it is exactly the same as if it is constructed out of concrete. You're not allowed to drive on it if it has this cross-hatched uh, uh, symbol here. Now, if you go through some place like Maple Ridge in the middle of the highway, they have an area in the middle of the highway that has a dotted line with a solid line on the outside from each direction. That is allowed to be driven upon. And in fact, you're allowed to drive in it, turn your signal on, and then cross into wherever you're turning. It's also possible to do the opposite. Let's say you're leaving the subway or the super safe gas in Ridge Meadows and you want to get onto a very busy Highway 7. You can tell that the traffic in the closest to you lanes has a break, but the, the traffic in the furthest lanes where you want to go is not yet having a break. You're allowed to go partway, stop in that middle lane, signal that you want to get into the new lane and wait till the other traffic clears. Hopefully that's clear to you, but if it isn't, this is dealt with in the book. This is an HOV lane, and HOV lanes usually have this black diamond, but they don't always. The big signal that something's an HOV lane is that it has a double thick white line. It's going to be white, and it's going to be solid. And you may not know this, but you're not allowed to cross this line even if you're going to be driving legally in the HOV lane. You have to wait until the line is dotted before you can go in and out of it. So you should act as though it is a concrete wall. So you can only go in this lane if you have the recommended um, or the required amount of passengers and you can only go in and out of it where there are perforations or breaks in the line. Many people get confused by solid lines. Solid yellow, solid double yellow, and solid white lines are what we're going to talk about next. White lines, whether they're solid or dotted, separate traffic going in the same direction. If they are dotted lines, you're allowed to change lanes. And if they're solid lines, you are not allowed to change lanes, which if you think about it means you cannot safely pass somebody if they're traveling in the same direction as you. Many people do not understand that you can cross this yellow line here, both to turn left as well as to pass somebody, but you have to exercise extra caution. Yes, it's true that lines usually have a perforation or are dotted when you are able to cross, but most people don't understand you are legally allowed to turn left over a line that has one solid yellow. If it's double, you're not. You're not allowed to pass and you're not allowed to turn left. So you must stay in your direction of traffic. Now, if the lane is dotted on one side, line I should say, is dotted on one side, but solid on the other, it is safe for the person who has the dotted line to pass, and it is not safe for the other side. And to wrap us up, these are both legally allowed designations of crosswalks in BC. And in fact, there are times when crosswalks do not have lines on the road. Sometimes there are signals that are activated by people pushing a button and lines flash. And sometimes all you have is a sign that says it is a crosswalk. You, once again, must make sure that people are completely clear of your direction of traffic before you proceed across. So if a person was in this intersection right here, and moving in this direction, and I was parked here, I could not leave until the person had walked across this to this half of the lane. The opposite is equally true. If the person is walking this way, I can't keep going through until they're all the way across the road. That works the same no matter what color or uh, particular pattern the lines are. And you'll see rainbow versions or other versions of crosswalks, and they all have the exact same legal force. All right. I think that captures pretty much everything that we need to cover in this particular module. Again, please study hard. Please make sure you quiz each other and don't rush through this content. And uh, I wish you good luck as you go out and get your class four learners in the field and your full class four license as well. Let me know when you do that. That's a major kudo.